Welcome everybody to another episode of the Global Campfire of Coaching. This is an ongoing global discussion with coaches from all over the world, people involved in the coaching space, people who support coaches. We find out what coaches are doing in these extraordinary times, how they're taking care of themselves, how they're taking care of their tribes, their loved ones, uh, how they inspire the communities around themselves. And today we have somebody from a region of the world that has been hit very hard by, by the coronavirus. We're going to be very interested to see how she is is coping these days. She is um, the CEO of her own company, which is called Vision Coaching. She is a facilitator for the World Business and Executive Coach Summit, probably much better known to a lot of people as WBEX. And I just want to read a little paragraph from her LinkedIn profile because I think it's, it lets you get to know her really quickly. I passionately love my new profession as a coach, mentor, counselor, and diversity consultant. I also found myself being able to create sincere and deep relationships based on mutual understanding, respect, unconditional love, authenticity, freedom, integrity, and last but not least, accountability. I would like to create powerful connections with extraordinary people fully committed in making a difference and letting this world be a better place. Wow, if that's not what we need right now, I don't know what is. Welcome, Irene Ricotta. So glad to have you here. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I'm really honored to be here and eventually uh, make people help how to deal with this situation right now. Yeah. Let's back up a little bit. What was your life like before all this started? Let's say in January. What was your, what were your goals? What were your projects? What would a day look like for you? Uh, well, I was collaborating just in January with the Remax Estate uh, um, Agency where I live as a recruiting manager and HR manager because you know as coaches we develop some kind of six cents to understand the strengths, gifts and talents of people and it's easy to us to even use our techniques to serve other kind of purposes so I was really involved in this project as well as uh, I was involved in a greatest project I was deciding to complete my second degree and then uh, try to have a kind of uh, scholarship for having my PhD. Uh, I was thinking about asking as mentor and tutor to Dan Siegel. I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. He's uh, uh, the writer of uh, Neurobiology of Wood the Wind. He's an incredible teacher and professor. Uh, because one of my greatest dreams would be applying coaching techniques to help ex-terrorists to gain their own balance because uh, people like that are on, not in balance. <laughs> when the coronavirus came, I say, oh, well, all my dreams fell apart. <laughs> but when I say, what can I do now? I ask this question to myself and uh, I say, see people suffering, especially here in Italy, we are uh, going into the eighth uh, weeks of uh, quarantine and lockdown and isolation, whatever you want to call it. The consequences for the psychological state of people are really, for some, dramatic. Uh, when I go to the shop to bring for my family and myself, uh, I see people already develop the post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. I see everywhere there is need of the work of coaches, psychotherapists, counselors, psych psychiatrists. I think that all these professions, now they have to forget any kind of question or uh, argument they have with each other and try to find a common way to help people to really gain their own balance because we are trained and also we experience this prolonged traumatic stress. 
I had the day that I cried when I knew that one million of people here are going to die. And I cried and I, and I was screaming and I was really upset. And I said to myself, I don't want that people die for this stupid reason. Because all this lockdown or the economy and financial situation is totally crazy here. And uh, I'm working pro bono. Yeah, for sure. It, it is um, hard to relate to what is going on in these parts of the world where it is such a dire situation if you're not in it. Something that, that I'm really interested in uh, would be when you're saying coaches and psychotherapists and, and counselors, let's kind of put these differences aside that, that sometimes, you know, is, especially academically, uh, we might kind of fight for our own turf and say this methodology is good. In a situation like this, where do you see the roles of coaches specifically? What kind of task do you see coaches specifically well equipped for to help people with in, in this situation? We are taught in many training to respond to the here and now. And uh, in this occasion, for example, I listen also to other coaches that uh, you cannot uh, have a sprint or run or uh, try to find a great solution for that very moment. In this moment, we need to just, as you said, grounded, grounded in their own maybe simple routine that can be slightly different, but it must be uh, something that they can relate it with. Because, you know, with the pollution of the information, with the pollution of the situation, uh, and uh, the confusion that these uh, things are driven, having some moment of self-care and moment for uh, family caring, uh, for creating a new space in our life, we are really great in doing this because we are trained, this could be important. And when we see that there are people that have something that is uh, um, more severe in terms of mental illness, or when we see great traumas, we have to have the courage to call our colleagues, psychotherapists or experts in trauma or other things and say, let's work together. Let's do something to help these people to overcome these problems. When I recognize that uh, there are the need of other kind of skill, professional skills, I cooperate with the people. We do uh, a lot of contracts and um, agreement with the other professionals in order that any of us is a really in a way to collaborate with the other sometimes we have to have a, a, a written uh, agreement in order that uh, I don't go out of my boundaries and they don't go out of their boundaries. So, hmm. Just to be clear. Yeah, that's very interesting. I hadn't heard of that concept before, to have a written agreement between um, different professionals working with the same individual to, to establish the boundaries via a written agreement. One of my first clients was a person that suffered for a psychotic syndrome. She tried in that very moment to work with me because she didn't want to work with the psychiatrist. And I told her, listen, I can help you because she is a very creative person. I can help you to develop your creativity, but I cannot uh, replace the role of the psychiatrist. So give me his number. We can work together. I was really clear in what I, I was able to do with the client, and I was just uh, just uh, graduated, so uh, I was really afraid to have also uh, legal problems, let's sure, say. Yeah. And we worked together, and the results were really amazing because she was able to develop some kind of new skill. She's a great painter, and uh, I was really happy doesn't matter what we do the most important and is that we do our best anytime that's very inspiring thank you for sharing that um now you mentioned 
before that that you yourself are emotionally very much impacted by by what's going on right and of course you there's no way that you wouldn't be so i'm curious what are you doing in terms of self-care right now i do my qigong practice um i started with uh, just five minutes and now i do 15 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes with the relaxing practice before to go to sleep and i have the better quality of sleeping for self-care sometimes i watch some series that i like that really uh, relax me even for some people cannot be relaxing like fringe I don't know if you ever heard about that. No. It's about the fringe science. It, it's a fantasy and science and combination with quantum physics and other stuff. <laughs> I love this this sort of uh, things because I learned many many scientific things through some of this series, uh, and sometimes they make me feel curious to go to look for uh, other resources to learn. And um, I work because I'm, I, have, I am so fortunate that I have a garden. I live in a countryside and I have four cats, and two of them are my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I also had a cat as a bodyguard when I was growing up. Um, they're the fiercest um, bodyguards you could you could imagine. You mentioned doing um, pro bono work. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what it is that you're doing right now? I'm working um, to help the group of Remax and other people to gain more stability in creating uh, a team and um, facilitating the team working. Then I am in some group, likewise at my coaching group, we are creating uh, a team of coaches that work for this very moment and we don't care if people are able to pay or not. We just decided to don't be. And we are creating a series of video to talk about what people are facing in this moment because they want to know how do we deal better sometimes with their feelings, emotions, sensations that can come up in very unpredictable way. They are uncertain like the uncertainty around. I am just working for uh, gathering money for people that cannot pay uh, the healthcare institution. So uh, we decided to be some of from all over the world to have this initiative and we will launch this initiative the next month I think so we are really trying to help in any possible way yeah wonderful and once that has launched please do share the link with me so I can put it in the show notes and people can um, find it and contribute thank you very much I will do for certainly what else is there that you would like to share with people? So me and my family, we have all the coronavirus. Don't be afraid because fear and panic, they they aggravate the symptoms mm. for sure. Any neuroscientist can confirm what I'm saying. The effect of the our mental illness is fundamental for our immune system and strengthen your immune system as I do. I keep uh, uh, bringing vitamins and uh, especially C vitamin. Uh, I take care of my nutrition. I take care of my body. If you cannot go out, even if you have just uh, a, a little bit of sun, bring it because the vitamin D that you can gain from this little spark of sun is really incredibly healthy for our body and even if you feel terrible or upset or angry or panic uh, just take a breath and be kind with yourself love yourself because you are not alone we are we are all felt even just once 
this feeling and connect with the people that you love. Because if there is physical distance, it, it cannot be uh, emotional distance. Yeah, okay. So your emotional well-being impacts your physical well-being. Absolutely. Think just about that. If you get upset or angry or panic, your cortisol uh, arise in a level that can create stress, more stress. And uh, one of the, the symptoms of the burnout is the high level of cortisol that can make a more acid your body. And the more you are uh, ill, the easier for the virus is to attack the cells. The healthier are the cells, the more difficult it is for the virus to attack the cells. And don't try to fight with the virus because you are going to be defeated. Accept it and accept the cure of the physicians and rest with that because this is what I did and this is have done many people that had and they and they are safe now they overcame the illness ground yourself in something that is relevant even in something little like uh, I don't know smell the perfume of the flower in your balcony or your window doesn't matter something that nurture your soul yeah so just to clarify, just to be really clear for people, when you say, you know, don't fight it, kind of accept it, that's for people who already have it, right? We still want people to kind of stay at home, to stay safe, to not run any unnecessary risk of infecting themselves or others. It's just if yes. you've already yes. contracted it, kind of accept that that is something that's going on right now and be kind to yourself and and. Don't try to ignore it. Don't try to fight through it. Don't try to go to work anyway. Yes. Um, but really kind of center yourself and, and do things that do you good, not only on a physical level, but also on an emotional level in order to, to get through it much better. Is that fair? Yes, this is something. And the other one is that uh, don't fight in terms of when you know if you have it, uh, don't refuse the fact that you have this. Mm. Don't try to say, oh, I have to fight, I have to do something. You don't have to do nothing at all because there are physicians that are trained for years and years and years to take care of yourself. And just you have to be relaxed. And the attitude is fundamental too. Yeah. Don't sure. force yourself. Yeah. Irene, um... Thank you so much. I could talk to you all day and I will definitely want to talk to you about your work that that you still want to be doing, you know, with, with Dan Siegel and the work that you want to do with, uh, with, with ex-terrorists. That sounds so fascinating. I just didn't ask you more about it because I know we would have gone down a whole, yeah. a whole long road. Um, and, and I can't wait to hear more about that. Let's leave it at that for now. Thank you so much for your invaluable insight, for your firsthand experience. And um, yeah, I don't know how much it means coming from the outside, but I, I appreciate you connecting with us. I appreciate you sharing. I can't really imagine what it's like right now for you, for the people that you know, for their loved ones. I just know that we have all the resources, you all have the resources to get through this in a way that will build something beautiful on the other side of it. Yes, I hope so. And I hope people we somehow have some hope after this uh, call that uh, an amazing sharing that we have with you. And uh, I hope to meet you again.